We'll be starting in less than a minute. We'll ask that you take your seats and prepare. We'll be starting in less than a minute. Thank you so much. Good morning and welcome to Oakland Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you that you came this way this morning, whether it's physically, whether it's logging on, we thank you for your participation. We're so thankful today because today is a, a special day, every day is a special day, but this is a, an especially special day. This church has been in existence for 75 consecutive years. <laughs> 75 years. I want to say 75 years is a long time. It is, okay, thanks for confirming that. We've got some members of this church who are beyond 75 years. <laughs> To do something 75 times, to come around 75 times, is a whole lot of times. And we thank God that every single year since 1946, he said, we're going to keep things going over here. Y'all just trust in me. Lean on me. Depend on me. Read my word and love my people. And it's because of that love and that love alone that was exemplified to us that we share with others that we are so blessed to still be right here as the Oakland Avenue Missionary Baptist Church with limited pastors who've led us with all their heart till they were called home. We ought to be thankful for that, for the consistency that God has allowed us to follow under leadership. And if we don't know what to do tomorrow, all we have to do is look to the past to see how we got here. And I believe it's because we've trusted in the Lord. So if you would, ma'am, if you would, sir, think on what God has done for you as we sing these words. Make it personal. I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord until I him who is able and he'll make a way out of no way because he's the God of all gods and if we trust in him and we stay on our knees and call on the name of the Lord he will deliver us from all of our challenges he's still able he's still able to keep us from our sins we thank you Lord for watching us Oh, I'm going to stay on the battlefield. Oh, I'm going to stay on. I'm going to do it until I, until I, until I die. So 
feel good, Lord. Oh, I'm going to stay home. And sometimes we need to be reminded that I'm going to treat everybody right. Oh, I'm going to treat everybody Everybody, everybody right until I, until I die. Treat everybody right, treat everybody right. Been so good, Lord. We thank you. I'm going to carry my. sit here, I'm, I'm grateful for every moment of the 75 years, and we praying that God give us another 75, and prosper us even more. But for our scripture reading this morning, one of my favorite, and I know it's one of your favorites, because we all came up on this for 75 years. I will lift my eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. From this time forth and even the next 75 years, forevermore. God bless y'all. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word.
Good morning, Oakland. I think about the 75 years here, and I remember when I was a child, I was kind of a deviant child because I didn't sit in the sanctuary. I hung out in the basement. I was a basement dweller doing service. But God saw fit to call me from the basement in the back row and put me on the front row, a place that I never desired to be. And then he called me to preach the gospel. I said all that to say this, anything is possible through Christ Jesus, anything. Father, I come to you right now, first and foremost, to humble myself. I'm asking you to search our whole, our souls. If there's anything in us that's not um, that is not pleasing unto you. We ask that you just remove it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, so that you can hear this prayer. Lord, we ask that you look upon the sick right now. Look upon them and heal their bodies. Touch them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Give them a testimony or how you raised them out of that bed. Lord, touch each and every family right now, Lord. We know the holidays is upon us, and there are some people that's going to be alone. Lord, we ask them that you come by their house, their apartment, and sit next to them, and let them know that they're not alone, so that they can have a, a good holiday, Father. Lord, we ask that you look upon the church today. The church is going through some hard times now when we have a virus that's keeping people out of the sanctuary. That we can't come together and fellowship in the way that you wanted us to. But Lord, I know through your grace, everything will be restored. Lord, we ask that right now those that are having trouble with their eyes and their ears and their vocal and even in their minds, Lord, and in their health, that you touch them right now, Lord. Give them hope to hold on one more day because what was yesterday was yesterday, but what's coming will be better. Lord, we just thank you today. And Satan, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus on you right now. We bind you and we cast you back to the pit of hell. And Lord, we ask that you come into this service, anoint the pastor, I'm giving words to say, so that the church can be edified and you can be glorified. Lord, we ask that you stop by and send a special anointing. Touch each and every soul in here, because everybody came looking for something. And Lord, we ask that you, on this day, that you answer their prayers. Give them hope that you're still there, that you're still hearing their prayers, and you have not forsaken them. Lord, we thank you today for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. Because, Lord, actually, you did enough at the cross. If you don't do anything else, you did enough right there that our souls may be saved and that we have a place to go when we leave here. Because you said in your father's house is many mansions. And we all got one for us if we continue to walk this tedious journey. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done. And we love you today, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. sing my song. And I am going to sing it. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise
praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing grateful.
go on and on. I could go on and on and on. About your words. About your words. Because I'm grateful. Because yes, I'm, I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just, just to praise to you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart. Give you glory and honor, Lord. Because we're so grateful today. Lift your voice and help us sing. I am grateful for the things for the that you have done. Look up and tell them yes. I'm grateful. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so, so grateful just, just to praise to you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart.
let's give God praise this morning. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Anybody grateful? Does anybody have anything to be grateful for? Thank you, music ministry. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, deacons, preachers, trustees, leading us in devotion. Getting us to where we are now. But I agree, I agree with the psalmist said in Psalm 124, had it not been for the Lord on our side, said it again in verse 2, had it not been for the Lord on our side. We have, we have so much, so much to be grateful for. Seventy five years. Lord has been good to the Oakland Avenue yeah. Missionary Baptist Church as he impressed upon B.J. Murray and 
Willie Wilson, <clears throat> Larry J. Walker, Sr. God has truly, truly been good. If you don't mind, I, I need y'all do me a favor. I need y'all just whisper, whisper a prayer, whisper a prayer to God for me. My voice has been trying to go out the last couple days, and, but we're still here, and we're pressing on, and, and God is going to get his glory regardless of anything and any, anything and anybody else. <clears throat> on a, well, today, uh, in this this season of this season of Thanksgiving, uh, this season of of Thanksgiving, and on this day of celebration, I want to talk to us from Psalm number one twenty six. Psalm one twenty six. Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with joyful shouting. Then said they among the nations, or as some translations read, the heathens, the Lord has done great things for them. Verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. <clears throat> Just want to talk to us today, really, from this third verse. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad just for a few moments just for a few moments of your time I won't talk from this thought that nearly something to celebrate something to celebrate now I know, I know us, and, and we really, we all don't need a particular reason to come together to celebrate anything. But don't get quiet, you make me think I'm sitting next to you. We, we can find and make up a reason to celebrate something. Whether it's a birthday, whether it's a half birthday, whether it's an anniversary, whether it's my toe is healed from surgery party. Uh, I know back in the day there used to be rent parties and, and all those dim type things. We can find, we can find a reason to throw a party. We can find a reason to to go back and dust off, brew some of our old LPs and, and put needle on wax. Call a few friends. Have a few uh, red cups and, and. And, and find something to celebrate for. 
and, and no matter what it is, no matter what it is, Steve, we can, we can find somebody that will come along and celebrate with us. Whether it's a joy party, whether it's a pity party, it's a sad occasion, we'll find somebody that can come along, that will, will be willing to come along and join with us in our celebration, regardless of how good or bad it might be. But one thing, one thing, one thing that we should never fail to celebrate is how good God has been to us. And, 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 and now here's, here's the thing, Charlie, about that is that I really don't need to invite somebody to celebrate with me how good God has been to me. <clears throat> we, can, we, can, we can have our own, if you will, praise party and, and just tell God thank you. Just simply for what he's done for me today. We can go back and talk about yesterday, yesteryear, yonder, and all those things, but Charlie. But we should never fail to tell God thank you for the simple things that he's done for us. I often found this, I often found this, uh, is that we wait until something big happens to want to throw a big celebration. But how can we really truly appreciate the big stuff if we don't thank God for the small stuff. We often neglect the small stuff because we're looking for the big stuff. I know the song, songwriter said that if he doesn't do anything else for me, he's already done enough. Well, that may be true. But I don't want God to stop being good because he's done so good so far. We have to find moments to where we can celebrate the goodness of God, no matter how trying or how telling the situation may be. We don't have to always celebrate when things are going good. But we can find reasons to celebrate even when things aren't going as good as we want them to be. Because fact of the matter is, is things could be worse. And instead of complaining to God about all the things that we're going through, we can find a reason to thank God that we're able to go through. Instead of complaining about the things that we don't have, we can find a reason to thank God about the little things that we already have. Instead of complaining about the stuff that we lost, we can find reasons to thank God for all that we still have left. So here it is. Here it is. In Bible it says that there were some people that found themselves in a sticky situation. And we know there's a repetitive cycle that's been repeated since from Genesis all through the Bible that God blesses, people mess up, they call on God, 
God blesses. They mess up. Call on God. God blesses. People mess up. They call on God. God blesses. People mess up. In 2021. People mess up. Call on God. God blesses. People mess up. Call on God. God blesses. And guess what? We still mess up. But no matter how much we mess up, we have the hope and the assurance that God never gives up. So if God never gives up on us, then why do we have desire to give up on God? Text him, it starts off that when the Lord brought us back out of Zion, brought us back out of, brought us back out of, out of Babylon, back into our homeland of Zion, uh, it seemed more of a dream than a reality. Because we had been in this predicament and in, 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 in this situation for so long, it seemed as if doom and destruction were our destiny. But no matter how bad it looks, we serve a God that can be good even when things look bad. Anybody ever been there to where things look bad in your life? You didn't think you were going to make it? Didn't know how you were going to pay bills? Didn't know how you were going to eat? Didn't know how you were going to find a job? Didn't know how you were going to survive? Didn't know if you were going to make it to the next day, the next hour, the next minute? Didn't know if you were going to make it, but God showed up. right on on time and it seemed as if what God was doing was too good to be true and you began to question and, and say God did you really mean to take care of me did, did you really mean to give me this blessing I know that I have not done everything right. I have not been the poster child for Christianity. I have not deserved anything real good, but, but God, in spite of all of that, you've still been good to me. And so, and so, and so, just like Joseph, we ought to be able to keep dreaming. Because oftentimes our dreams do come true. But just like Joseph, we got to be careful about who you share your dreams with. Because everybody don't want to see your dreams become reality. And so they'll do whatever they can to make your dream a nightmare. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that in 75 years that there's some stories that B.J. Murray and, and Willie Wilson and, and Larry Walker could tell us about how God was, was rescuing and there were people who didn't want to be rescued. How there was progress being made, but there were others who didn't want to see progress because it wasn't on their terms. But in spite of that, they kept on pushing and kept on keeping on and kept on pressing on. And those that were walking alongside of them saw the goodness of God through the progress 
of their perseverance, and they began to shout every step they made. It wasn't like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like the wall of Jericho where they had to, where they had to march around a certain length of time, but it seemed like every step they made, every step got sweeter and sweeter. Every day they went forward, progress got better and better, and every time you saw something happen, you got happy. Is there anybody, is there anybody, Derek, that just get happy when you see things happen? It ain't even got to be about you. You just see something happening. And you get happy because things are happening. And, 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 and here it is, here it is, back in text, here it is. Here it is, they were, they were on their way back to their, they were on their way back to their home, and, 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 and they began to laugh and shout. And, and their laughing and, and shouting sounded like worship. And, and their laughing and their shouting sounded so much like worship that those that knew them, those that were in the general vicinity, they assumed that God was being good at them. I, I, I'm not making it up. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It said the nations and heathen said the Lord, that Lord has been, the Lord has been, the Lord has been, the uh, Lord has been good to them. Here's the thing. You don't have to broadcast or make a public announcement or put in uh, on the front page of the newspaper when God has been good to you. Sometimes your thank you is enough. And when your thank yous become enough, people who don't know you will look at you and realize that God has been good to you. Okay. Okay. Maybe I maybe I preach to the wrong crowd. Because because your worship and your praise and your thanksgiving and your thankfulness and your gratitude to God, it ought to be so good that it becomes contagious. If there's anything I want to catch from somebody else. I want to catch a dose of joy. A dose of joy. If there's anything that I want to catch from somebody else, it ought to be some gratefulness to God. If there's anything that I want to catch from somebody else, it ought to be the outpouring of the Holy Ghost that when it's so good to them that it has no choice but to jump on me. If there's any kind of party that I don't mind going to, that I don't care how long it lasts, is a party to where we celebrate the goodness of God. Okay, we ain't got to wait till November to talk about how good God has been to us. Songwriter said every day is a day of Thanksgiving. I don't have to wait till the fourth Thursday in November to tell somebody what I'm thankful for. Every day is a day of Thanksgiving. God has been so good. Anybody say this part with me? God has been so good to me. Every day, he's blessing me. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. Take some time to glorify. Glorify the Lord. Today, just Cunningham and even go say, he keeps on <laughs> blessing me. 
over and have got a witness keeps on blasting me over and in the sunshine he's blessing in the rain he's in good days in bad days in the light and in the darkness he keeps on blessing Their worship was so good that other people said the Lord has done some great things for them. Can you imagine your worship and your devotion to God being so powerful that when you walk down the street, somebody sees you and says, the Lord has been good to you. You sitting at work having lunch, and somebody comes in the break room with you and says, the Lord has been so good. Can you imagine your worship being so good in the four walls of this building that whoever drives down Harper, John Harbrush, 94 service ride for Keck. They hear your worship and they turn around and say, the Lord has been. So good. So good to them. And then you just say, yeah. The Lord has been. I'm in verse 3. The Lord has been so good. To us, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we, y'all notice, I want to speak in French, O-U-I, but W-E, we, we are glad. What are, what are you glad for? There was a songwriter by the name of John Newton that as bad as situation he was involved in was, he had a change of heart. And he penned the words of one of the great hymns of the church where it said, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. He was thanking God for his past. But now am found. Thanking God for his present. Was blind. But now. I see, thanking God in advance for his future. We can thank God for where God has brought us from. We can thank God for where God has brought us to. There ain't no harm in praising God for where God is going to take you next. And is there anybody in here that don't mind giving God a next praise. Anybody don't mind telling God thank you for whatever he's going to do next. Yes, I can thank you, God, for what you've done in my past, but I don't live there anymore. Yes, God, I can thank you for what you're doing for me today, but soon it's going to become history. But God, I can thank you in advance for where you're going to take me next. Because wherever you take me next, I know that you're going to be there with me. And so I can say the Lord has done great things. Huh. 
Y'all remember? I'm trying to quit. I'm glad to get out of here. Leave you alone. Been, been holding you long enough. Y'all remember? Y'all remember the old little game that we used to play? Sing along with a song. And, uh, and everybody, once one or a few people would start doing it, it would begin to become contagious and everybody else would do it. It sounds a little, like, little bit like this. If you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. This is Daniels. Clapping hands wasn't good enough. So then they would say, if you're happy and you know it. Clapping hands wasn't good enough. Stumping feet wasn't good enough. If you're happy and you know it, turn around. <laughs> Sometimes clapping hands wasn't good enough. Stomping feet wasn't good enough. Turn around wasn't good enough. So then we added a little Jesus to it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Some of us, some of us, just coming in, we got so advanced that we didn't just clap our hands. We didn't just thump our feet. We didn't just turn around. We didn't say amen, but we began to do all four together because that's just how good God had been to us. And is there anybody in here that has a reason to tell God thank you? Anybody got a reason to clap your hands, stomp your feet? Turn around, say amen, leap for joy. Anybody got a reason? Thank God for his goodness toward you. The Lord. And I'm out of here, Lord is done. Great things for us. Whereof we are glad. And as I leave you, I just want to remind you here that even it didn't just stop there. Well, because not everybody, not everybody was free. Yeah, right. But what they did was, even in their worship, they prayed for those right. who were still left behind. They began to thank God for where they came from. They began to thank God for where they were, but then they were praying for those who had still been left behind. That they would all come together and then someday would be like a great harvest that seemed like God's work is being done. And all of us may not be in the same place at the same time. But one of these old days, when it's all over, when we close our, as old Dickens say, close our Bibles and hymn books for the very last time, when we stick our swords down in the sand of time, and we study war no more. We find ourselves making our great transition, finding ourselves at the feet of the great shepherd to where on that great day, we find ourselves in eternity at the feet of Jesus, where every day will be howdy and never goodbye, where there will never be a need for a candle because Jesus is the light of the world. But we will never have to worry about being in pain because we're now in the land of no more. No more struggling, no more heartache, and no more pain. But now we're in the land of overflow with gates and streets of pearl and gold. In the new Jerusalem where we don't have to worry about the negativities of life. We don't have to worry about the pains and strife of this old wicked world. 
because now we find ourselves in the bosom of the Lord and we can sing our song the Lord has done great things for us and now we have reason to be glad what has he done for you and for me well he woke us up this morning with life health and strength gave us activities of our limbs put breath in our bodies the things we did wrong he didn't let us die there but he gave us grace and mercy he walked alongside of us but we had the testimony of David yea though I walk through the valley I will fear no evil because thou art with me thou rod and thy staff they comfort me thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies my cup runneth my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever anybody glad for what the Lord has done for them anybody glad for where the Lord has brought them from anybody glad for what he's brought you through anybody glad for what he brought you over anybody glad for what he kept you from anybody glad for what he's done for you the bible said the lord has done great things for us whereof we we are glad let me tell you one thing that he did for everybody that we've got a reason to celebrate for one friday on a hill far away with arms stretched wide with nails in his hand with the crown of thorns wrapped around his head had stripes on his back with nails in his feet had a spear pierced side and he hung between two thieves but that's not how the story ends the bible said he died he died to the sun cried refused to shine till darkness came over the world to a centurion servant said surely 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 this must be the son of the living god they put his body down in joseph new tomb all night friday night all day saturday all night saturday night but guess what y'all Sunday morning, got up out of the grave, stood on resurrection ground, declared between the living and the dead. All power is in my hands. All power is in my hands. The Lord has done great things for us. And we have, we have a reason to be, to be glad. Aren't you glad that you're not where you used to be? Aren't you glad you're not in the land of used to? And don't let nobody take you take you back to used to because the Lord has been too good for you to you for you to go back to used to we've got so much we've got so much that we can thank God for but in all your thanking, don't forget and don't fail to thank God for the small stuff. Every step you take is a reason to say thank you. Every time you inhale 
and exhale is a reason to tell God thank you. Every time you blink and your eyes open back wide again, that's a reason to tell God thank you. As my uncle would say, back from down in the roads of Alabama, he brought me from a cotton sack to a Cadillac. <laughs> Aren't you glad that you ain't in the cotton sack no more? Yeah. You might not have Cadillac, but ain't you glad that you ain't got what you used to have? Amen. God has done so much and God has done some great things in the life of the Oakland Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. And I'm crazy enough to believe that God ain't done yet. To us, it may seem as if God has done a lot. But in his eyes, he's barely scratched the surface. <clears throat> Bible says that eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for those that love him. Anybody love him? Yes. You think God's been good to you. Keep trusting. You think he's been good to you. Keep believing. You think he's been good to you. Keep hoping, keep faithing, keep praying. You think he's been good to you. Keep living. God bless you. God keep you. May heaven smile on you is our prayer. In spite of 75 years that we're celebrating today, we have every reason to celebrate because the Lord has done great things for us whereof we have we ought to be glad God bless you God keep your doors of church open
blessing me Blessing me What? He keeps blessing me Blessing me He keeps blessing me Well Blessing me He keeps blessing me well. Blessing me on blessing me <clears throat> open my eyes mm -hmm. that I might see yes. he's blessing yeah. uh, we know today is our <clears throat> today is our church anniversary celebrating uh, 75 years of again God's goodness and his kindness toward us and uh, we know that we have our, <clears throat> our different modes and ways of giving where we have our online giving of, through GiveLify um, as you come enter and enter and exit the sanctuary uh, you can drop your <clears throat> tithes and offerings in in the basket but today uh, we're going to do just a little just a little tad different um, deacons and Ushers are going to come around. We're not doing any walking. The only person is walking are the ones that's. Thank you. Before we move in this manner, uh, again, the brothers or the ushers will come down the aisles to receive your offering. We're going to pray over it now, okay? Dear God, we thank you for this, another opportunity to celebrate what you have done for us. Yes. We thank you for the preached word, and we thank you that you've reminded us to live in such a manner that others can see that we are blessed, and we can turn that attention to you when they ask us why we are so well off. We thank you for this offering. We ask that you touch it, bless it, and multiply it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. there while they're coming around for the offering just a couple things I want to just impress upon real quick um, after we do our offering a couple of things just want to talk press on real quick um, this Wednesday again this Wednesday um, there's no Bible study on there's no conference call Bible study this Wednesday evening but some of you may have received some of you may receive the the uh, servant keeper uh, text message or email what we're going to do on Thursday morning, Thanksgiving morning. What I want us to do is to join the Zoom call just for a few minutes at 11 o'clock. Everybody's received, those of you that received the link, if you have not, let us know and we'll make sure you get the information. Uh, we just want to do, just get together real quick th Thanksgiving morning at 11 o'clock and just have a, have a, a, a prayer of Thanksgiving together. It won't be long. You can put the rolls in the oven. You can put the, put the greens on low or whatever you want to do. Let stuff marinate. Just give us may, maybe, maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes of your time Thanksgiving morning at 11 o'clock. So that way we can, if, if you don't, I know some people don't want to be on camera. You ain't got to be on camera. Just join in with us. Uh, if you do want to be on camera, those of, those of us, can, we can see your faces. 
we can see each other for Thanksgiving as we celebrate together as a church, then you can go and celebrate together with your families. Okay? So join us again this Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Um, the, the, the Zoom link has been sent out. If you have not received it or if you need it, then let us know. We'll make sure we get that to you. Um, so we make sure we make sure that those that that don't have the information will get that. Um, Don't forget today, <clears throat> today uh, at two o'clock, uh, two o'clock come back um, and we will uh, culminate our celebration for our, uh, for our church anniversary. Uh, and one of our own will be here with us this afternoon, Pastor Henry Cooper. Uh, he will be here with us at, at two o'clock. So please, sir, please, man, when we dismiss, let you go grab a bite to eat, grab something, take a nap, do what you got to do. But come on back and be with us at 2 o'clock so that way we can kind of take care of some things while everyone is gone. And then 2 o'clock we'll come in and, and close out our anniversary celebration. Okay? Um, I feel like I'm missing something. You missing anything? No, I think I'm good. Okay. Um, all right. Nothing else. Uh, we're all good. Nothing else. Come on, let's stand. Praise God from home. Home blessings go. Bless you in the city, bless you in the field, bless you when you're going, God, and you're coming in for this time and forevermore. May the grace of God give you what money came by you. And we all sing together. Oh.